Security Threats from Mobile Codes At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Explain Mobile Codes and Explain Security Threats from Mobile Codes Introduction to Security Threats from Mobile Codes Hey friends, this is Webby, your Internet Assistant. I am here to enlighten you with lots of security-related information. In this modern and fast-paced world, security holds an important place than ever. Almost every day, one hears about damage or loss of data occurring due to security lapses or a lack of security. Electronic data or e-data, credit card details, government documents, etc. are more vulnerable to attacks by the malicious mobile code developers. Friends, Mobile codes are software codes that have the ability to travel from one system to another to do the work assigned to them autonomously. These mobile codes are software agents that act on behalf of their creators. Interesting, isn't it? Mobile codes have a few advantages. They help to achieve better network performance and utilization. They automate a sequence of tasks in different locations. Also, they distribute and update different software packages. Mobile codes applications are so vast. Look at them. Amazing, right? Buddies, with these amazing advantages comes great challenges as well. Earlier, mobile code was machine dependent and could only run on very specific machine architectures. But today, it has become increasingly vulnerable to malicious attacks and defective software roaming the internet. So friends, join me in today's session on security threats from mobile codes. Shall we begin? I hear a good loud yes. Security threats from mobile codes. Pals, basically, software is classified into two types with regards to security. Trusted software that come from trusted resource and untrusted software that are not from any trusted resource. Security threats appear if the mobile code generated by a malicious outsider attacks the environment where it is executed. Malicious mobile code may steal or manage to get illegal access to some private data, for example, the financial data of a company from the database residing on the host. Another problem is, mobile code may damage or consume the host resources like deleting some files, consume a lot of processing power or network bandwidth or cause denial of services as well. Code mobility imposes few security features when protecting a host from malicious code. The mobile code's origin must be authenticated because host and mobile code bear separate identities. The host must verify the integrity of the mobile code it received as the code is exposed throughout the network. Since mobile codes are generated by another party, its actions must be limited through access control and should be checked through semantic verification. Well, here comes the twist. The host itself might be the malicious party trying to damage the mobile code. This malicious host may simply destroy the mobile code and hence impede the function of its parent application. The host may steal sensitive information carried by the mobile code's owner and the host may modify the data carried by the agent for its favor. In order to prevent the above three cases, Data segments as well as code semantics must be protected. With the problem comes its solution. Let us discuss them briefly. Protecting the host from a malicious agent and agent from a malicious host. Let's discuss how both the host and the mobile code are secured from threats. To protect the host from a malicious mobile code, different techniques are used, such as sandboxing, code signing, access control, and program checking. Let us look at them one by one. First is sandboxing. 
Sandboxing is a technique that makes the foreign mobile code to be executed within a restricted area called Sandbox present in the host operating system. Then, the mobile code can be controlled efficiently by allowing monitored access to local host resources like CPU time, memory, etc. so that DOS attacks and overconsuming of resources by the mobile code can be avoided. The known examples of sandboxing technology are the security manager of Java and code access security in .NET. The next technique is the code signing. This technique authenticates the mobile code before it is executed. The producer of the code is required to sign it digitally with one-way hashing method and the consumer of the code verifies the signature before using it. This enables the platform to verify that the code has not been changed since it was signed by the producer. Then comes the access control technique. This technique chooses whether or not to run a program at the point where it enters the client domain. Examples Firewall and Web Proxy. The last technique is the program checking. In this technique, the host is allowed to determine whether the program code provided by another system is safe to install and execute. The basic idea of PCC, that is, Proof Carrying Code Scheme is that the code producer is required to provide an encoding of a proof that the code adheres to the security policy specified by the code consumer. The proof is encoded in a form that can be transmitted digitally. Therefore, the code consumer can quickly validate the code using a simple automatic and reliable proof checking process. That is all about protecting the host. Let us see how to protect the mobile code from malicious host. Displayed are the various techniques used in protecting the mobile code from the malicious host. First is the data protection technique. Here, the integrity of the data collected by a mobile agent is protected using a cryptographic technique. Authentication mechanisms can also be used to protect against impersonation. Hash chaining, partial result authentication code, that is, PRAC, RSA, based encryption and sliding encryption cryptographic techniques are adapted to maintain the data integrity. Next technique is the integrity of computation. A mobile code can be protected using a cryptography-based integrity proof. Proofs are called traces that are collected during the execution of an agent. These traces are then used as a basis for code execution verification, that is, to check whether the code executed its designated tasks properly. In order to make the proof checking process faster, this proof is transformed into a holographic proof. A holographic proof system is a system for writing and checking proofs in which one can probabilistically check the validity of a proof by examining only few of its bits. The last one we have is privacy of computation technique. A mobile code can be protected using a technique called function hiding. In the function hiding technique, a function f is encrypted into e of f by its sender, then e of f is run on the malicious side with x as an input. The result of E of F into X is returned and decrypted, yielding the result of F of X. Guess what, guys? We have come to the end of the lesson. Conclusion Mobile codes have a wide range of applications and advantages. Its vulnerability to security breaches and threats are becoming a growing concern. Yet, day by day, Mitigations to improvise the mobile code security threats is hastened. Summary Let us recall what we have learned today. Mobile code is a software that is transferred between systems and can be executed on one or more hosts. Mobile codes include scripts like JavaScript, VBScript, Java applets, Office macros, 
active X controls, etc. Displayed are the advantages and applications of the mobile code. To protect the host from a malicious mobile code, the displayed techniques are used. Similarly, to protect mobile code from a malicious host, the displayed techniques are followed. Catch you later with another interesting topic. Bye-bye.